our cognitive and effective faculties are inextricably intertwined. And so when you think about your ability to learn and to engage in the world, you can't do that without recognition of your effective responses, so your emotional responses and cues. And so if we are not able to regulate, we're not able to attend to information, we're not going to be able to take that information in and process it in a way that's going to be meaningful for us in both the short or long term in life. And so emotions really do underscore our ability to thrive. We think about it um, in the SEL landscape. We talk about it as, you know, SEL is not something that is just like another thing on the plate. It really is the plate itself and really um, the undergird of, uh, of positive development for, for all persons, right? So for children and for adults. Now, when you think about your youth and their experiences of development across their school socialization, the role that emotions play are paramount. And so it's the regulation of their ability to attend in the school setting. It's the conditions of anxiety and stress um, or stigma that they may be experiencing throughout school. It's the understanding and recognition of the relationships that they're forming, their ability to begin to um, regulate their own uh, learning and monitor and self-monitor their own learning and growth, problem solve, work in groups. I mean, we could go on and on and on, right? And so I actually, I am, I'm rather surprised when I meet an educator who talks about SEL as not something that they need to do, that they that they in their discipline or in their classroom, that there's no room for emotions here. Because as I just described, many of these skills and strategies, these competencies within emotional, um, within social emotional learning, they really do undercut across all disciplines and classrooms of instruction. And so you know, many times you hear it from like a math teacher or math and science teachers will talk about, particularly at the secondary level, that emotions have no place here or that emotions are for the English teacher to be teaching or for advisory session, but um, math anxiety is such a well-studied topic. And so it really is quite surprising um, when we think about uh, that disconnect there, of that we, we need to start with the emotions in order for our students to be available to learn and similarly for our teachers to be available to teach them. For more information about social and emotional learning, please visit readingrockets.org. This project was made possible by a partnership between the National Education Association and WETA.